This presentation is an insight into the basic principles and methods that are used along with standard practice when installing ground gas membranes. We will provide an overview on the range of ground gas membrane products and the tools and techniques required to complete a successful installation of ground gas membranes. This video does not cover the complete installation of a ground gas protection system, which also includes building structure and ventilation requirements. Our range of ground gas membrane products include Memtech M1 Membrane Memtech R1 Radon Membrane Memtech Titan VOC Membrane Memtech Liquid Gas Barrier LGB Memtech Gas Tape 50 Memtech Gas Over Tape 150 and Memtech Detailing Strip As well as the Memtech range of products, you will also require a heat gun with power cable and a suitable power supply. The use of rollers for pressure sealing on the membrane seams. Scissors or cutting tools. Tape measures for confirming dimensions. Black and white marker pens. And cleaning tools to get the membrane in the right condition. Correct PPE should always be worn. Exact details will vary, depending on the construction site, and the specific, COSH, requirements. When working on areas where the gas membrane has been laid, it is important to be mindful of treading on locations where you could damage the seam lines of the gas membranes. It is also important to confirm the substrate you are working on, and that it is appropriate for the gas membrane installation, and safe to work on. The area must be clean, and any debris which could damage the membrane, must be removed. It is essential, to check all tools before they are used. Look at the leads, plugs and connections, and check the PAT testing is in order, and up to date. Visually, inspect all leads for any breaks or damage. Also check the sockets are in place, and are in good order, and will connect properly. To start up the heat machine, we turn on the main switch and set the temperature, according to the thermostat settings. This is indicated on the side of the machine. Also look at the manufacturer's instructions. Here, they give an advisory three minutes to warm up the machine from setting the temperature. To turn the machine off, we need to turn the thermostat down. We need to let it cool down for five minutes before we then turn it off. With the heat gun fully warmed to the required temperature, we can now apply the nozzle between the two sheets and use the roller to apply pressure to fuse the two membranes. This is normally conducted as a test seam at the beginning of the day, just to confirm that the welding is compliant. We can also use the scissors to pick probe or use the mechanical stress point test. Using a test sample, we can peel and shear the membrane to see how well it has adhered and how much fusion has occurred between the sheets. You can see the delamination that has occurred here between these two products. We will now detail a pipe penetration. Pipes will fall in all different locations on site. Some will be up against the wall, some will be in corners, some will have collars on, so each will need detailing accordingly. In this instance, you can see that the pipe is located where the membrane is going to fall against the pipe. Using a marker and an off cut of pipe, Mark out the initial cut. We are not cutting a huge star out of it, but we are keeping the cut very tight. It is very important, the membranes actually form in, and as you can see here when you look closely, there is an upstand, and quite a little edge turning up on that. Staying with the standard detailing strip, which is self-adhesive, cut two, 300 mm squares. By folding it in the diagonal, we maintain the 300 mm width. Cut two squares. The first square will locate centrally, over the pipe. In this demonstration, the square is marked by an indent from the pipe, 
but using a marker pen would be more accurate for cutting. Allow a suitable margin that is equal around the edge of the product. Folding it in half can make the cut a little bit easier. One tip when using scissors is to keep them lubricated by using washing up liquid in water. This will make it easier to cut through the bitumen. Now take the other 300mm strips and cut into segments which are 150mm by 100mm. Now, using the segments, work your way round. We need to be mindful here, of the overall height, and if there is a collar that is going to encroach on it. With heat application, it is quite critical at this stage that we apply the self-adhesive membrane to the upstand section first, and not the base. If you adhere to the base first, you will find that you will not be able to turn the membrane up. As you can see here, we are actually folding it back, so that we can get the corners in, nice and tight. This also enables us to get the heat gun underneath the bitumen, to create an effective seal. Work your way round this unit, to complete the seals. As we continue to work round, let's consider some of the PPE requirements. When on site, you must adhere to the requirements of the site. In this case, we need to wear a high-vis jacket, boots, and a hard hat. For these demonstrations, we did not wear a hard hat. You will notice that we are using gloves, one of which is a fingerless glove. The difficulty of trying to do something in this task with cut-resistance gloves is very difficult. It is important to include this in your risk assessment. All sections have now been added around the base. Bring the base plate back to the product, but do not remove the backing. Instead, score the backing paper, to allow it to be located. Find the top section of the backing paper, and remove, keeping a nice flat formation. Remember to remove all the backing paper. This is critical, as if you leave any behind, it will compromise the adhesion. Apply heat to finish the detail off. You will sometimes see a little bit of bleeding of the bitumen, through the tape. As previously, with all our other methods of work, we will check around the completed unit, both visually, and with pick testing. An alternate method for sealing around pipe penetrations is to use pre-formed, top hats, which are prefabricated gas membranes, designed to fit various pipe diameters. Ensure you select the correct pre-formed unit, for the size of the pipe, and check the top hat is a snug fit over the pipe, prior to installing. Use a marker, and an off-cut piece of pipe, to mark the position and size of the pipe. Remember to keep the cut very tight, as it is important that the membrane forms in. As you can see here, there is a little edge turning up around the pipe. Now take the top hat, and round off the corners. Slide over the pipe penetration, ensuring a snug fit. 
Taking a hot air gun and seam roller, heat the membrane and weld the top hat to the gas membrane. Work your way around the pipe penetration, ensuring a good weld between the two membranes. Ensure no rucking or creasing occurs. Once complete, check all seams to ensure a gas-tight seal. Where the top hat returns up the pipe, take a section of the self-adhesive detailing strip, which should be at least 75 mm wide, and slightly longer than the circumference of the pipe. Wrap the detailing strip around the pipe ensuring that 50% overlaps the top hat, and 50% overlaps onto the pipe. Once in place, use the hot air gun to warm the membrane and seal to the pipe using applied pressure from the seam roller. Once the detailing has been completed, check all edges and seams, to ensure a complete gas-tight seal, has been achieved. Our final part of our installation, is recording the work that we have done. This will require photographic evidence, as a record to accompany the drawings. Use a sign-off sheet to quantify the amount of work which has been done.